Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zeng here, and today I am bringing you a guide to team building in the VGC 2015 format. A lot of you guys have been asking for this, so I figured it'd be pretty helpful to both those that are completely new to VGC, as well as those that may have been playing a bit longer but kind of want to see how I build my teams personally. This guide's basically going to cover as much as I can. Of course, I'm sure I'm forgetting some things, but the main points I'm going to cover are how I personally build my teams, the top threats you should really be looking out for when building your teams, a bunch of helpful resources to really guide you in this process, and basically all the things you should really be looking out for when you build a team in this format. So, hope you guys enjoy it, of course leave a like if you did, and let's jump right into it. So first of all, I look at the rules for anyone that may not know, because I'm sure people who are new to VGC will be watching this. They are double battles, level 50, you bring 6 Pokemon but you choose 4 after team preview. The Pentagon rule, which means your Pokemon have to be caught or bred in XY slash Auras. This basically eliminates some previous abilities like Defiant on Tornadus and Thunderous, and some tutor moves from games like Pokemon XD, for example, Follow Me Magmar. Species Clause and Item Clause are also in effect, and there are a couple of certain legendaries that are banned. These tend to be the cover legendaries like Kyogre, Keldeo, Deoxys, Mew, uh, full list is in the description below for those that don't know, but basically, yeah. Uh, that limits everything else, so the rule set is basically Aura's National Pokédex, minus some of these legendaries. As you will notice, there is no uh, Sleep Clause, which players who've played, you know, under Smogon rules may be familiar with, so this is a pretty important thing that I'll cover more into later, but that's basically it for the rule set. So some general VGC team mofo also really guided towards those that may be new to VGC as a whole. Uh, entry hazards and stall really aren't as common in VGC as they may be in singles. A lot of the teams tend to have one mega evolution, some even opt for two. It's pretty rare to see a team with zero though, uh, most tend to have at least one. Though now that we're in VGC 2015, uh, the format is not as... Um, hyper offensive I'd say as last year was, uh, so for those that have played both years I feel like this year you don't need a mega evolution nearly as much as you did in previous or the last year. Uh, Protect is a staple move really on all non-choice Pokemon, which uh, is one of the biggest things about VGC that's different from previous or other kind of formats you may play. Uh, Protect is essential because it really helps you maintain momentum throughout the course of the match. Setup moves also aren't as common in singles, so for example uh, Dragon Dance, Calm Mind, etc., but they still see a lot of usage, and Dragon Dance Mega Gyarados was actually on Sage Park's World Championship winning team. So setup moves tend to be used, but they really need to be prop have be properly supported, basically. Um, you can't just slap it onto a Pokemon and expect to really set up with it. A final reminder, let sanctioned VGC events actually run under a timer of 45 seconds per move, 15 minutes for the entire game. This is to ensure that tournaments run pretty quickly, and as a result, it is why strategies like stall, like uh, minimize, etc. Etc. tend to not work out as well in real life events just because it's going to go down a timer and chances are when you're using those kind of strategies you're always going to be down against your opponent. So just a friendly reminder and that is pretty important when considering uh, and building your team. And so finally, before we get into it, here are some really great resources that I personally use when I build my team. Nuggy Bridge and its forums is by far the best resource for just general VGC information. If you guys don't have an account there, you should definitely sign up because all the top VGC players really are on that site. An early VGC 2015 metagame overview is an article by Scott Glaza, who is one of the commentators of the National and World Championships. This is a really, really good article to get an in-depth overview on basically the top 50 Pokemon in the format currently, and all the common items, natures, moves etc. It's a really well written article, so if you're new to VGC or just want to learn more about common Pokemon in this format, I definitely recommend you check it out. Nugget Bridge also has the VGC 2015 speed tier list, which should help you in, you know, figuring out how much speed all your Pokemon need. The Team Magma Team Builder is actually one of my favorite resources out there, and you may not know about it, but basically, it allows you to list all your Pokemon and all their attacks, and you don't need a full list of 6, basically you can just add as you go along, and it'll display all the things that your team are weak to, and the things that your, you know, your team has good coverage against. It's really, really good in figuring out, you know, what kind of Pokemon you should be adding to help out in terms of resisting attacks, uh, what Pokemon you may need to use to hit other Pokemon harder, etc. So, it's really, really good. Showdown, it's Damage Calculator, I'll both excellent showdown mainly for practice and damage calculator really to figure out and finesse your EV spreads and the Pokemon global link statistics really help out in really seeing which Pokemon have dominated the online format in the past season or so. So these are some of my favorite resources and I definitely recommend you check it out. All of the links are in the description below. So let's jump into actually building the team. 
Now, my first step is always basically choosing a core, and by core, I mean it could be a Pokemon, it could be a strategy, it could be a group of Pokemon, etc. Uh, you know, a bunch of strategies people like to build around are like Tailwind, Trick Room, Rain, etc. These are really common archetypes. Uh, single Pokemon and Mega Evolutions are really great starting points, and I actually personally like to build around a bunch of Pokemon at once. So this is an example of a team that I brought to a Premier Challenge a couple weekends ago. I have analyzed this team already, which I'll also link in the description below, but um, basically I'm going to walk through how I ended up uh, building this team. So I really wanted to use Mega Salamence, Terrakion, and Gengar. So that's what basically ended up being my core. I know it's a bit weird since it's starting with three Pokemon immediately, but you know, when I was choosing a core, I, I basically went through which ones covered each other's weaknesses well enough. Um, and so I decided on this core to take advantage really of speed and just super powerful attacks. You know, so I input this in the Team Magma Team Builder as I was constructing it, and I did see a bunch of, you know, glaring weaknesses. So, the second step is really just proper support, and all these steps are really, uh, they go off one another, so there's really no difference between this step and the next step, as you'll see. But, basically, when building your team around any core Pokemon strategy, etc., you really need to make sure that every new Pokemon you add supports the previous ones accordingly. So, you know what, you want to ask yourself, uh, what is the Pokemon and strategy I'm building around most weak to? Also, what is it good against, so I don't, you know, add too many Pokemon, uh, and overextend against one kind of strategy, but have, you know, glaring weaknesses to others. So when you look at my core, it reveals a bunch of instant weaknesses. First of all, Gengar and Terrakion are really for a Pokemon, so they're, they're KO'd pretty easily. It's also quite weak to Fairy, Dragon, Ice, Psychic, and Steel. Um, those are types that are all pretty common in VGC. And I didn't really have any great ways to one, hit those for super effective, and two, they could do a lot of damage. So I decided to add my next Pokemon based off weaknesses, and Bisharp was the one I looked at immediately because it really helps with type synergy. It gives me switch-ins, um, it also also allows me to hit, you know, Ice, Psychic, and Fairy for super effective, and the other two it hits for neutral, so it did cover a lot of the types I was weak to, and I felt pretty comfortable adding it on. And the next step, and all the pr following steps, is basically what I call the domino effect, where you build off each new member, as I mentioned in the previous slide. So, you know, Bishop's a really great addition, but it still leaves some pretty open weaknesses with my team. And these are some following factors that I really consider when I add new members. You know, the current typing and attacks of your Pokemon, and, uh, yeah, of your attacks, of course. Um, and in this case, mine was pretty decent, especially since Bishop gave me a, a lot of new coverage against, you know, previous we uh, types I was a weak to. Uh, you also want to really consider the physical and special split, and this is pretty important in VGC because uh, if you have too many physical type attackers, you might find yourself in some trouble because Intimidate's a very common ability, as is Will-O-Wisp in terms of moves. So, uh, you know, you don't want to have like five physical type attackers and one special type attacker most of the time. Uh, having Bishop definitely helps out a lot because it challenges Intimidates, but at the same time, you know, I still didn't want too many physical type attackers. And at this point, it was three versus one, so I figured I'd really need a special attacker, at least one more on the team. Uh, you, obviously, you should consider the overall speed of your team and how it matches up. Uh, at this point, my team was very fast, you know, Bisharp's not one of the faster Pokemon. It's actually nice because it gave me coverage with priority with Sucker Punch, but it was also in that mid-tier speed range, so it could cover, you know, some of the slower Pokemon as well. So, you know, the overall speed here was not a much of an issue, but the one thing that I was slightly concerned about was Trick Room teams, because if Trick Room teams were able to successfully set up Trick Room, I didn't have any really slow Pokemon that could take advantage of it, and that tends to be an issue. Finally, you really want to think about the general bulk of your team. At this point, my team was really frail. As I mentioned, Gengar and Terrakion were frail enough as it was, and having Bishop really didn't help that at all, especially having another fighting type weakness. So I knew the Pokemon I were to add in the future should be slightly bulkier. Now the next Pokemon I actually ended up bringing to the team was Scarf Hydreigon, because first of all, it gave me another special attacker. That was the biggest weakness at that point, which I wanted to patch up. It's also relatively bulky, even without too much investment, which I really liked, and finally can out outspeed and KO a lot of the threats to Mega Salamence, which of course I was trying to build around, so I really liked adding Scarf Hydreigon there just because it could outspeed a lot of the dragons. Uh, people ask me why I use Hydreigon over Latios, and that's because Hydreigon gives me a lot more better uh, type coverage in terms of attacks, and having super effective type attacks against every type is really important, in my opinion. So now, you know, the next step really in an extension to the previous one is covering your bases. Uh, at this point I had 5 Pokemon, so I really had to find that final perfect 6th member. My team had a lot of strong attackers, but it really lacked true bulk, and ideally the last member would be a Pokemon that could really help out the rest of the team through mainly support moves and can cover the weaknesses. So I looked at my team and I realized I was really weak to bulky water and electric types like Rotom Wash, Thunderous, and Zapdos, Rotom Wash being one of the main ones, and I couldn't effectively manage any of those. So 
The final perfect member actually was Amoongus. Amoongus is really bulky, you can redirect attacks away from Feraler Pokemon, you know, it's one of those Pokemon that fit pretty easily onto teams, and in addition, its typing allowed it to switch into those fairy type attacks, water type attacks, grass type attacks, electric type attacks, etc. And the grass really helped versus water types as well. Having Amoongus also gave me another option against opposing Amoongus, which might be tempted to Rage Powder because, of course, uh, Amoongus isn't affected by Rage Powder. So I really, really liked uh, this final member, and it basically completed the team, especially since uh, Rage Powder gave Salomon some nice Dragon Dance support. So finally, you know, I ended up with this team, and after you construct your team, you should definitely test it online through Doubles Battle Spot or Pokemon Showdown. Uh, both have their merits. Showdown allows you to play more games in a quicker amount of time to see what you might be weak to, but Battle Spot tends to have a better representative of the actual metagame, so, uh, you know, you do get a, end up matched with really solid players and teams there. Not saying Showdown doesn't have any, but in my experience, Battle Spot tends to have more, even in the lower ratings. Afterwards, you should really edit your team accordingly. You know, if you find any one, uh, if you find your team weak to any one team or strategy or moveset, etc., you should replace your weakest member for a stronger solution. However, there are cases where you like all your Pokemon so much and you don't want to replace any of them, so I would then recommend you to change a move or two. A prime example of this is in 2014 when I ran a Trick Room team with Gothitelle, Mawile, and some other Pokemon. I actually have the analysis on that. You can find it in the description below, but in that team basically I was really weak to Charizard Y initially, so I ended up putting Rock Slide over Iron Head on my Mawile, and Rock Slide over Helping Hand on my Hariyama, so I had two ways to really beat Charizard, which otherwise would go through my team and steamroll it, and that ended up helping out a lot, a surprising amount of people were caught off guard by it, and it really just gave me more options and outs, whereas I didn't really need the moves I replaced, so that's a prime example of testing your team and, you know, uh, just uh, editing it accordingly. So, I haven't actually talked about, you know, actually making your Pokemon spreads and EV sets and whatnot. I've really only mentioned getting the Pokemon together. So, once you, you know, have this common core, I have these, uh, all these Pokemon together, you obviously want to design your set, and you can do this as you go along. You don't have to do it, obviously, after you finish team building. But, uh, for... The most common sets of moves, you can check 3ds.pokemon-gl, uh, you can also check VGC 2015 metagame overview as I mentioned earlier on Nugget Bridge, they'll basically give you like the top 10 most common moves on each Pokemon, and most Pokemon don't have viable moves past like 10 to 15 maybe at most. Uh, the most you know common attackers have like four to six uh, plus protect and then uh, supportive po po Pokemon tend to have a bit more, but um, in general, um, designing your set shouldn't be too difficult in terms of uh, actual moves. You should really consider risk versus reward though for lower accuracy moves, for example Draco Meteor versus Dragon Pulse, Fire Blast versus Flamethrower, etc. You also should really think about where, what kind of setting you're bringing this team to. For example, if you're playing a 9 round Swiss tournament at US Nationals, you might want to opt for higher accuracy moves because you don't want to risk move, uh, missing them, and whereas you know, at the World Championships players tend to go for some uh, lower accuracy moves because it is a best 2 of 3 set, so you have some leeway in terms of missing attacks. Natures are pretty self-explanatory, they really should be catered towards the role of whatever Pokemon they're on. For example, speedy sweepers like Gengar, Teraki, and Garchomp really need the speed because otherwise they're outsped by Pokemon that can just KO them, whereas with that speed boost, they really outspeed most of the metagame. Uh, bulkier attackers like Landers, T, Sylveon, Heatran don't need speed as much and they tend to invest in attacker special attack mainly because they can afford to and they are bulky enough to take attacks. And finally, bulky supporters, as you'd imagine, as you'd imagine excuse me, uh, invest in defense and special defense, for example, Cresselia, Thunders, and Amoongus really don't need too much offense, so they can, you know, put more in the defenses. And obviously your item should really match what the specific Pokemon's role is, but 3DS Pokemon and VGC 2015 metagame overview have most of the common items for all the top Pokemon out there. So what about EV spreads? EV spreads is a more complicated thing that I'm basically going to make a separate video about just because uh, it's not really enough to fit onto one slide in a presentation. Um, so there will be a guide to making EV spreads coming out soon, but here are just some general notes you should consider. Uh, first of all, some Pokemon really work better with all these really nice complicated defensive, offensive, and uh, you know speedy spreads. For example, Thunderous, Cresselia, Zapdos are Pokemon that really tend to invest in 3, 4, maybe even uh, 5 kind of different stats. Um, Though 5 is pretty rare. Uh, others tend to just use a simple spread of 4, 252, 252, like Garchomp, Gengar, Terrakion, Bisharp. You know, Sage on Park's World Championship this year had a bunch of spreads like Mega Gyarados, which was that, Pachirisu, which was that, um, etc. So, a lot of the times players are scared of using 4, 252, 252. You know, they think they need a more creative spread, but the reality is, for some Pokemon, that really is the best spread just because you need the max speed and uh, attack investment. 
Um, but you should definitely refer to Nugget Bridge if you want to see some previously uh, successful EV spreads. Um, you can basically search a Pokemon in their search function and it'll give you all the results from the past three years. Of course, you should remember that EV spreads tend to be catered towards specific teams, so if you do choose to adapt a spread from the past, you might want to edit it, especially since a lot of the spreads are from 2013 where the game mechanics were slightly different. So that is pretty important to consider. So here are some key components of a team that I always look at. Speed control is really important, you know, how fast is your team, uh, can you deal with having slower Pokemon or faster Pokemon, uh, do you have any way to really control the speed, and if you're going up against opposing speed control teams, you know, do you have a way to really beat them? Bulk versus offense, as I mentioned previously, was really important as well. You know, you really want offensive Pokemon, but you don't want too frail Pokemon, because otherwise your opponent can easily pick up KOs, so you want that good balance between the two. You also don't want Pokemon that are too bulky, but can't really do much otherwise offense. Uh, you know, Pokemon like Amoongus, which are really nice for, you know, uh, overall support, but can't get much damage off. Synergy and type team typing is also really important. You know, you want good overall typing with your team. You want to be able to switch easily between team members. You don't want to be too weak to one move or attack or Pokemon. Uh, one of the biggest ones this year is Sylveon and Hyper Voice. Make sure you have good switches to Hyper Voice and you have ways to effectively beat Sylveon. Uh, you also want to cover a wide range of weaknesses with your attacks. So you don't want too many of the Pokemon with too many of the same type attacks, you know. There's no need to have four Pokemon with an Ice type attack or four Pokemon with a Rock type attack. So that is pretty important to remember. And finally, you don't want your team to be too weak to any kind of strategy, Pokemon, etc. Make sure you have at least one check to every Pokemon and strategies like Tail, Tail, uh, Tail, <laughs> Tailwind, excuse me, Trick Room, Rain, Dark Void, etc. I kept on saying Tail Room there. We it's actually a, a combination which some players have used in the past where you combine Tailwind and Trick Room, but yeah, make sure you have ways to stop or at least beat all those strategies. And basically here is a list of strategies and things you really need to prepare for. Obviously all the top Pokemon, once again refer to the metagame overview list for the Pokemon you really need to have ways to beat, at least one way to beat. Weather teams, especially Rain, because every year Rain kind of makes a comeback and dominates tournaments. Even the most simplistic Rain teams, you know, if you don't have a way to beat Politoed Ludicolo, you're probably in some trouble. If you don't have a way to beat um, Charizard even by itself, you're in some trouble. If you are too weak to trick, or hail teams like uh, Bombasnow, you know, you're probably in some trouble. So make sure you have a way to beat all the weather teams paying special attention to rain. Uh, status conditions, of course, are really annoying. Sleep probably being the biggest one. Amoongus' Spore and Smeargle's Dark Void are two of the most annoying things to deal with in this format. So make sure you have your way to beat it because if you're not properly prepared for it, it can really just shut your entire team down. Uh, paralysis from Thunder Wave users like Thunderous, obviously, is also very annoying. Uh, make sure it doesn't stick around for too long. Burn and Freeze. Uh, burn, you know, is more controllable, but Freeze is one of those where you really can't control, so that's why having a Lumberry can really help prevent random freezes. A prime example of this is the 2013 World Championships. Uh, my brother in the junior finals, uh, his opponent went for an Ice Beam on Conkeldur, froze it, but because he had Lumberry, it unthought immediately, and that really was the turning point in the battle and helped him win the match. So, that's why I tend to like to have at least one lum, lum user on my team to really prevent random freezes and give me gives me you know safer switches to those status conditions. Speed control, as I mentioned multiple times, uh, you're going to run into multiple of these kind of teams and strategies in VGC, so make sure you prepare for all of those. Spread moves in general, like Hyper Voice, Rock Slide, Earthquake, and Heat Wave. A lot of teams like to just spam these attacks, so make sure you have your ways to handle them, because if your team is too weak to it, can just really beat your entire team. Wide Guard's really one of the best options to this. Uh, redirection plus setup is also very scary. For example, Amoongus, Togekiss, Clefairy, partnered with setup Pokemon like Dragon Dance, Mega Mance is very threatening. You know, so, you know, having Taunt to stop the redirection is nice, and making sure you can one-hit KO the Pokemon that tend to use setup attacks is also really good. Prankster Pokemon have always been really annoying, so make sure you deal with those, Quick Guard being one of the best moves out there, and it's uh, really a great option. And finally, the Hacks Factor, for example, Swagger, Rock Slide, Flinches, etc. A Pokemon is one of those games where obviously luck is really involved, but I feel like a lot of players just uh, ignore the fact that they can actually control luck to a certain extent. For example, when your Pokemon are slower than Pokemon that use Rock Slide, like Aerodactyl, etc., you put yourself at a higher chance of losing the battle just because, you know, they can spam Rock Slide and get away with Rock Slide flinches. So that's why I like to have priority attacks to really hit those Pokemon. I like to have Pokemon that really resist Rock Slide or any of those Haxi moves in general. And obviously, there are, Pokemon's never going to go 100% in your way, and sometimes you will just have those games that are completely uncontrollable, but in general, I like to remember and consider that, you know, there are some sort certain extents to which I can control luck, so um, having Pokemon that can deal with those Pokemon that like to use luck-inducing strategies definitely helps out a lot. 
So, in, you know, in finale, there are a couple questions you should really ask yourself when reviewing your team. Um, these are just a couple ones, and they basically cover all the things I've mentioned previously. Um, I'm not going to bother reading them out loud since you can do so for yourself, but I think it's important to know that you don't need to have a perfect answer to all of these. Um, in team building, you know, in VGC especially, you can opt to be weak to a certain type of Pokemon or strategy or whatnot if you feel like you play well enough to the point where uh, you feel like you can outplay your opponent or, or etc. In general, I feel like having an overall solo team is the best way to go about it, but no team is ever perfect, so, you know, sometimes maybe you don't have a perfect split between all the physical and special attacks. Uh, maybe you don't have a safe switch into all the types of attacks, but you feel like you can just outplay them and you feel like your team is solid enough that you don't need to have, you know, a perfect perfect team and answer to everything. And that's perfectly fine, you know, multiple teams I've built in the past have been weak to maybe a strategy or two, but I felt like, you know what, I'm bringing this to a tournament, I'm gonna be playing six to seven to nine rounds, uh, so if I run into one poor strategy, you know, even though it's gonna be a less than optimal matchup, I feel like I, I might be able to outplay my opponent. So do consider that and remember that you should have, you know, good answers to everything, but sometimes it's not terrible if you are slightly weaker to one strategy or Pokemon or etc. So, here are just a couple of examples of really great VGC 2015 teams that have already performed really well. Uh, Paul Chua, which has been on this channel before, and his Trick Room Hail team. And as you see here, uh, the teams do cover a broad sp uh, spectrum of strategies. Angel Miranda, who ran a Mega Salamence team with a normal Swamper, I really like that one as well. Florian uh, Daflo, who won uh, Italy Nationals last year over in Europe with the Rain team like he won a Premier Challenge with this past weekend. Uh, Marcus Stadter, Germany's national champion and one of the best players in VGC, who ran an interesting Blaziken Good Stuff team, also at a Premier Challenge this past weekend. And then finally, the Battle Spot Standard, which is just a bunch of strong Pokemon uh, string together. So the reason why I listed all these teams is because they cover a broad spectrum. Um, you see the Trick Room and the Hail option from Paul, the Rain team from uh, Florian, Marcus with kind of the good stuff but with a tech Pokemon in Blaziken, Angel who really built around Mega Salamence and had interesting uh, techs in Swamper and Clefable, and then the Battle Spot Standard which is just common Pokemon and you know Pokemon and it's a team that if you were to jump onto Battle Spot, uh, chances are you'd run into one sooner or later. So, uh, I really like VGC 2015 because a lot of creative Pokemon and picks have been doing well already. Um, as you see on Paul's team, you know, he's got Jellicent, he's got Mega Bomb of Snow, Angel's got Swampert and Clefable, Florian's got Tornadus and Thunderous T and Mega Swampert, Marcus obviously has Blaziken, so this should be a testament to team building in VGC and how you really don't need to use just the most standard Pokemon to win. Uh, you can easily find creative picks, and since the format is so open, they often function very well as well. So, just a couple of examples, um, none of, uh, Angel's the only one who has actually posted team information online, which I'll link in the description below. The others, just Pokemon, but this should give you a sense of really uh, how some of the top players go about building their teams and what they're weak to uh, and their strengths are. So yeah, uh, I, I, I really like a lot of the teams here, especially Paul's Trick Room Hail team. So finally, finally in conclusion, uh, first of all, the description has all the helpful and relevant links that you may need, so definitely check those out and bookmark those because they're really helpful for team building, and they will be for the remainder of the season. Uh, remember, however, that your team is only half of the battle, how you play with it is also a crucial factor. So a lot of the times I just see players copying teams and they think, oh, I'm going to do so well with this, but that's not going to be the case, you know? Um, one of the beauties of building your own team is you really learn all the strengths and weaknesses of it, and when you copy a team, you don't really know, you know, the intricacies that really went into that team building process. So, you know, you don't expect to steal a team and be able to perform immediately with it, because how you play as a player and how you really learn about that team is a very important factor. Definitely don't feel discouraged though if your team doesn't work out at first, because even the best teams underperform in bad streaks, so, um, if you feel like you have one bad streak with your team, you know, don't just give it up, you know, play again at some other time because a lot of the times we tend to go on tilt when we play and make suboptimal plays. So don't give up immediately. I know it's kind of cheesy, but it's honestly true. And a lot of the times I've went back to teams that I thought were really bad, edited it a bit, and they ended up being really good. So yeah. Team building is a very long and intricate process, and like I've mentioned, no team is ever truly perfect, as I realized that perfect should have a T there. Um, but yeah. No team is ever truly perfect, uh, even Ray Rizzo in 2011, who I thought built one of the best World Championship teams, or just teams overall as I've ever seen, had, uh, as he even said, had some weaknesses. So, uh, you just have to really cover as many weaknesses as you can and then leave the rest to your team building and playing abilities. Excuse me, team playing abilities. 
And so in finale, uh, I hope this guide helped you. It was pretty long, but I feel like it covers most of the important things. Of course, there's so much that goes into team building that even a 25 minute video isn't enough, but I feel like I covered most of the basics, especially for those that may be new to VG VGC as a whole. Um, and yeah, so definitely check out all those links that I gave you in the description below. I thought, once again, Scott's uh, Nugget Bridge article was really good, the Team Magma, Team Builder, etc. And those should really help you out in getting started. And of course, coming soon, uh, a guide to EVing your Pokemon, as I mentioned earlier, and a team preview guide, since a lot of you guys have been wondering, you know, how do you choose your Pokemon when you go into battle? So in conclusion, that is it for this video, guys. I really, really hope it helped you out. Please leave any feedback and support in the comments below if you can. Uh, liking the video definitely helps out a lot as well. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed it. Of course, more guides will be coming out soon, as uh, including Road to Rank, which comes out daily, and all those individual Pokemon analyses, guys. And then I have a bunch of new series I'm planning on announcing very soon. So yeah, hope this video helped, guys. Uh, and yeah, that's it for this one. I'll see you next time. Peace.